So for those of you that don't know or are new to the channel, I'm currently finishing out my unfinished basement into a short-term rental for Airbnb. Uh, I'm gonna be going over all of the different things you need to do in order to finish a space like this, but in today's video, I'm gonna be going over the framing. So if you're curious about that and, and what you need to do for a basement in particular, uh, I'll be walking you through that and kind of what I had to do. So stick around and let's get into the video. Before we get too far into the video, let's talk about the different framing members that we're going to use. Working our way up, we we'll start with the bottom plate. This is going to be made out of a pressure treated material since this is going directly onto concrete and it's what we're going to use to anchor the wall to the ground. Next we have the studs and these run vertically and these make up the structure of the wall and it's what we attach our drywall to and everything else. If it's a load bearing wall, these are what transfers the load from floor to ceiling. Then we have the top plate, which is what we use to attach the wall to the ceiling, and it also provides more structural stability. A double top plate provides a little bit more weight bearing, but it's primarily used to lock together two different walls. And even though this is not a load bearing wall, I still had to use a double top plate because otherwise my walls would not reach the floor joists above. Next we have a rough opening, and this one happens to be for a door. When framing out a rough opening for a door, here are the framing members that you're going to run into. First, we have the king studs, and these run floor to ceiling just like a normal stud, but these are what everything attaches to. Next are the jack studs, and these have a few different purposes. First is they are the support for the header so that nothing comes crashing down, and second is they establish the rough opening width. Next, we have the header. Building code stipulates that you have a stud every 16 inches, and a header is the only way to get around that. So if you want a door or a window, a header is going to allow you to support the weight above so that you can put in that window or door. These work by spanning that gap across the door or window, and that load gets transferred directly down through the jack studs into the ground. Next we have the cripples. Now, in the past, headers used to be directly above the door and the cripples would be on top of it, transferring the load up to the top plate. But nowadays, those headers are actually framed at the top of the wall and the cripples are used more as spacers. Now with the rough opening, you want it to be two inches wider than the door that you're gonna be installing. So if you're installing a 32 inch door, you're gonna want a 34 inch rough opening. And the same thing goes for the height. You want it to be about two inches taller than the door you'll be installing. When framing a wall, the first thing to do is lay out where your studs are gonna go. So we're gonna go down the tape and mark every 16 inches, but we're actually gonna come back three quarters of an inch and put a mark there. That's because the stud is actually an inch and a half wide. So when we place the stud right on that mark, the center is gonna be dead on every 16 inches. Traditionally, you do this marking on the bottom plate, but since it's pressure treated, it's a little bit harder to see. So for the purposes of this video, I did this on the top plate. Next, we're gonna come back with a speed square and transfer that mark all the way across the board to make it a lot more visible. And then we're gonna draw an X on the side that we're gonna be placing the two by four. Now that we know that, let's go ahead and frame a wall. The first thing I do is cut my bottom plate because that's going to be the exact width of the wall that I'm going to be building. Then I'm going to cut a top plate to the exact same length as the bottom plate. Now that I have both my bottom and top plates cut, I can lay out where my studs are going to go. Next I'm going to separate the bottom and top plate so that I can place my studs in between. They don't need to be perfectly lined up, but you want them in the general area so that you nail them properly. So moving on, we're going to use a 3 inch framing nailer to sink two nails through that top and through the bottom plate into those studs. Now in previous videos I've had people saying you need three nails, actually you don't. In a 2x4 wall, each stud gets two nails. In a 2x6 wall, each stud gets three nails. Now there are a couple different ways to frame walls in a basement. The first is to frame it on the ground and then stand it up. The second is to frame it in place. Now both of these are just fine ways to frame a wall, but they work better in different scenarios. If you have a big open area to frame walls like I do in this room, then I would recommend building them on the floor as it's way faster. 
but I will say that building a wall on the floor and standing it up can be a total pain in the butt given how tall it is when you add that double top plate. So to counteract that, I'm building it without the double top plate and I'm adding that in later. You will need a way to fasten your walls to the concrete and there's a few different ways to do that. I'm using a ram set which uses a 22 caliber blank to fire a nail directly through that bottom plate and into the concrete. You can also use a hammer drill and tap cons or you can get some masonry nails but those take quite a bit more elbow grease. So if you're using a ram set all you have to do is shoot it through the bottom plate. So now I handle the issue of the double top plate and you can see here just how tight it can be. And this is really one of the downsides of building your walls on the ground because you don't know this until it's already built. So for that reason alone, I recommend building your walls in place when framing a basement. And definitely don't follow my lead here standing on top of a paint bucket. It was super precarious and just a bad idea. I fell off multiple times. I actually ended up getting some scaffolding from Harbor Freight for about $200 and that's going to help me out not just with the framing but also with the drywall and everything else that I'm going to be doing. So now with the bottom nailed to the concrete we need to secure the top to hold the wall strictly in place and I do that by nailing the double top plate up into the floor joists above. So now let's run over the basic construction of a header. Up until now, I've actually been framing non-load bearing walls, so I didn't need a single header. But now I'm going to be dealing with load bearing walls, so I'm going to have to build some headers for a window and a few other doors that I'm going to be putting in. Now what I'm doing here is building a header for a 2x6 wall. So what we're going to need for this are three 2x10s and two sheets of half inch plywood. Traditionally what you would use here is half inch OSB, but I didn't have any on hand and it made no sense to go and buy some since I already had some quarter inch plywood. So instead I used four layers of quarter inch instead of two layers of half inch. But in essence what we're doing here is we're cutting our material into pieces that are slightly smaller in all directions than the actual 2x10s. We do that because this is really just to be used as a spacer. It doesn't provide anything structurally to the header. So now that we have all of our pieces cut, we're gonna go ahead and, and assemble this together. So we're gonna do a two by 10, and then we're gonna do our half inch of material, and then we're gonna do another two by 10, and then we're gonna nail that together. Then we're gonna add our spacer material and the other two by 10 that we cut. Then just like before, we'll go ahead and nail the crap out of it. Now there might be a standard practice for the amount of nails you need to put into this. I'm sure that I did far more than I actually needed to, but better safe than sorry. At this point, I was working with a terrible air compressor, so many of my nails didn't sink all the way through, but I just used a hammer to tap those in the rest of the way. So the first thing that we have to do when installing a header is to get it in place. And this can be pretty challenging when you are a one man crew. So I ended up using a few squeeze clamps that were three feet long. And then I just slowly raised it until it was in position. I mean, yeah, I could have wrestled it and looked a lot manlier, but I figured I'll pay myself by the hour. So once it was in place, I used a laser level to make sure that it was looking good and I could then move on to installing the jack studs. Installing the jack studs is really easy. Um, you just get them as close as you can by hand and then you hammer them in the rest of the way. But you just wanna make sure that it is a snug fit. You don't wanna go too tight, but you do want it pushing up on that header because this is load bearing. Then we'll go ahead and nail the jack stud in place from both sides and we'll also nail in the header from the sides as well. Now for this wall, which is not a load bearing wall, I decided to build everything including the double top plate on the ground and you can see just how tight it is to actually get this to fit. And if you watch this stud, you can actually see it deflect as it gets more and more compressed between the floor joists and the ground. 
and I'll be fixing this issue later on by adding some blocking between the studs. So now that we've gone over building on the ground, let's go ahead and run over building in place, which is definitely my preferred method. So I started by first installing my bottom and top plates, and then I cut my studs to length and nailed them in between. Now you can see here that I actually cut them just a hair short, but since it's a non-load bearing wall, that's actually not gonna be too much of an issue. So next, I'm building the rough open for a 32 inch door to the laundry closet. I start by first adding the king studs as this is what we're gonna reference off for the whole rough opening. Next, I cut my jack studs to length and installed them on the insides of those king studs. After the jack studs are installed, I could then add the non-load bearing header or at least that's what I've been calling it. If you know the name for this, go ahead and comment that down below. And when that is installed, I could then add the cripples, but somehow I lost that footage, so here they are. And here you can see me installing the last couple walls, which I actually did fairly early on when framing. And you can tell because I built them on the ground and stood them up, which again, I don't recommend. And yes, don't worry, I did come back later and add the double top plate just like I did on the other walls. So that's my two cents on how to frame your own basement. I'm sure that there's tons that I missed or tons that I just did wrong. So if there's anything like that that you caught, go ahead and leave it in the comments so that we can all learn from each other. I strive to make helpful content that everyone can learn from. So if there's anything that you took away from this or if you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing to my channel as that's gonna help me reach more people. If you're interested in any of the tools that I was using throughout this project, I have some Amazon affiliate links in the description and you can take a look at those. So that's it for this one. I'm Clayton the Weekend Builder. And I'll see you next time.